you know, I haven't had any problems sewing the others. But as soon as I decided to show how this is done, yeah, this is what happens. This is what happens. Hello, fashion sewers. I hope you are well. If you're new to my channel, I'm Colleen G. Lee. I'm here to help, inspire, motivate, and share ideas for refashioning clothing. And if you're into that sort of thing, consider subscribing. I also share tips and advice towards the end of my videos, and I also provide you with links to sewing tutorials on my channel in the description. Let's get started. So this is what I am going to be refashioning, is this cardigan. Yeah, it's a bit frumpy. So I'm just going to jazz it up and how I do my projects is that I just, I don't, I vaguely know what I want to do. So at the moment I know I'm going to cut this in half and that's about it and add buttons. Um, but as I'm going through the process of redesigning this, ideas are just popping into my head of what I will want to add to it. And that's always been how I've gone about refashioning on my channel or refashioning in general. Um, so yeah, so at the moment I know it's just boring. The buttons are boring. Um, so I'm going to show you some ideas, you know, show, show you some ideas of what, how I think about design and fashion and how I kind of take that mindset of refashioning clothing because it is slightly a different mindset when you just work, when you're just designing, when you've just got the free um, mind to design from flat fabric, you know, that hasn't been obviously um, made into a garment and this is just challenging, just as exciting. So I'll shut up now and I'll get on with this. So I'm going to be remo removing the buttons and I'm going to be cutting it in half. Something tells me that, and, and because I'm adding black buttons, I need a stronger detail to go with it as well. And at the moment my mind is saying to me, probably add a black band and the first thing I'm thinking about is elastic. Um, so that may happen, it may not happen. And things that I say throughout this video um, may happen or may not happen. It just depends on my fitting because I do a lot of fitting and I think that's very important when you're refashioning. Um, so um, let's see what I come up with when it comes to refashioning this cardigan. Let's get started. So I'm going to remove the buttons because it does this no justice whatsoever. And also it's 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 warping. Um it's not very stable the button stand at all. Um so I don't mind if it buttons up or not when it comes to the end products, if you like. So I'm going to remove the buttons. That'll be the first thing I'll do. And then I'll cut it in half. So these are the buttons I'm going to be using, these black satin buttons. It's a shank. So you actually sew it from underneath. It's what you refer to as a flat button. So can you see the difference in size? It's really big. Um, but as I said, I'm not going to button it. And also it won't be able to go through the buttonhole because it's too small. But I don't mind that because it's, like I said before, it's not very stable and they'll only get wider and wider if you keep using them anyway. So I'm going to show you a trick of how to give the impression that the button is being, has gone through the buttonhole. I'll show you that a bit later. But for now, I'm going to cut it in half and take it from there. Okay, I've got it on. So the first thing I want to do is decide where my waistline is, and it's here. That's where it naturally falls. I've got a pin, actually I use a different pin head, a pink one instead of a white one, so you can see. So that's where 
my waistline is and then I'll cut just slightly under in order to give myself some seam allowance and I'll cut that all the way around so it's all even around the back. It's a good fit, it's a bit loose um, but uh, oh, it's okay because I'm not going to button it anyway. Um, the sleeves are a good length. Yes, this is where I like my sleeves to be. <laughs> yes, it's, a, it's, it's an excellent length. So I will not be interfering with that. And yeah, it's a good cardigan. Um, may have it coming in a little bit, maybe a bit of gathering, maybe helping with the elastic. Like I said earlier, that feels as though it wants to be part of this project, my elastic. Um, but let's go ahead and just cut that in half. Let's fold the cardigan in half, like so. Let's be as flat as possible and even as possible. So it's even, no, it's not even there. So it's a case of just putting in a couple of pins because I want it to be the same on both sides. I don't want a garment that's lopsided, as they say. And it's worth doing all of, all of this as well to properly prepare because you want a good quality garment. You want a good professional end result. Right. Get my tape measure. This is where I marked it. It's done. Okay, next step. What is the next step? <laughs> the next step is to um, put this aside for the moment, the bottom part. Let's focus just on the top. There's another pin. It looks better already. That simply looks better already, you've got to admit. Okay, so I'm gonna get my big buttons. So one's gonna go here, and one's gonna go here. It's looking better already. And then these are gonna go on this side. Because remember, these holes are too big. And here, and the collar falls back. Yes. So should I, do, should I sew the buttons on first? And then I could be thinking what I'm going to do to the bottom. I think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna sew the buttons on first, and then I am going to think about whether I'm going to add anything to the bottom of this or anything on top of it um, and while I'm doing that while I'm thinking about that I, I will be thinking about that as I'm sewing these buttons on I do have tutorials on how to sew on buttons I'll link those in the description okay I've sewn these buttons on and I'm going to show you the little trick of giving the illusion that these buttons have come through these button tiny buttonholes just look how gorgeous that is I just love that detail. I mean, you can have these buttons sitting on top and just sew the button closed, but when you've got that kind of feature, oh, it's gorgeous. Anyway, so I've um, got my button here, and then it's just a case of just picking a little bit of the button stitching just to anchor the thread into place. Probably a good idea to have a thimble. Just 
okay should be okay and you get your button just place it in position like that and then you're going to get your needle you can go through some of the button hole itself and you're going to you more or less find yourself through the the eye of the button itself and come through the other end picking up some of the buttonhole on the opposite end and pull that through let's do that about five or six times so you're going on this, the other side of the buttonhole remember you're going through the buttonhole as well buttonhole stitching and slide it through to the other side use a thimble to help you then pull through and do it about five times just to make sure and just take take your time as well You know, I haven't had any problems sewing the others, but as soon as I start, decided to show how this is done, yeah, this is what happens. This is what happens. <laughs> but I resolved it, it's okay. Yes, of course, it's going to give me this hassle. I mean, that was twice, wasn't it? That's going to be the third one. Go through the other end. Just take your time, pull it through. And there we have it. Just look how cute that looks. It really looks as though it's coming through the buttonhole. That's what I like about it. Let me take the tape measure off. I do you like that? That's nice. I think it comes in just okay. Falls on the right. Yeah. That's good. I like that. The only thing I don't like is the back. It's just, just a little bit too full. There's a bit too much fullness in there. So I might put an elastic casing at the back. Let me see what happens when I make the camisole that goes underneath. But yeah, it's okay. I like it. It works. Yep. Now I need to focus on the second half of the project. So I've got the bottom half, put it around me. So it has to come, so it's going to be like a camisole sort of thing. As you can see, obviously it's big. So I'm going to put buttons Here, yeah, smaller buttons. So these will be functional buttons. I'm keeping it straight now. You can see it's rising up, isn't it? It's not. Looks straight. That's going to naturally fall back into its place, though. It's rising up, so it's not a straight right angle on either of them. Maybe that will help in my design idea you can see there's so much more at the back so I'm going to have to make the back smaller so I'm going to, to cut some out of the back so it becomes a little bit more fitted right, so I'm going to put I'm going to raise this just a little bit I need to put a pin in here OK, 
Okay. So at the bottom there, the bottom there, and bottom there. As you can see, it's, it's curving, isn't it? Put another pin here. I do like the way these pockets are. You know, when, when I curve it like this. Yeah. That's quite nice. Another pin in here to make sure it stays in place. Not sure if it's going to be a top where I may have to sew down the button stands so it doesn't gape open. Okay, I'm liking that so far. The back obviously is going to have to take me quite a lot and I probably can use some of the back to face this, which I will do. Yeah, now that's more 32 meters, it's getting there yet. So let me get a pin. So awkward when you have to pin yourself up. Well, true. Sorry, I've got a pin in the mouth. Do not put pins into your <laughs> mouth. <laughs> do not do that. Okay. So that will come up once I've cut it. So I need it to get. I should change my jeans. I'm just going to put the jeans on. Okay, that feels comfortable. I'll put a pin in there. I'll straighten it out when I'm not on camera, but let's focus on this. Okay, so that's a good fit here. Yeah. Button here, don't it? So, because I'm taking some out of the back, I will be definitely facing this section here. Ah, oh, yeah, I like the back, it's raising things a bit as well. I'm gonna put the pin the other way so I don't get any injuries. Okay, right, so I'm going to try the top off on. Take off my pink cushion ring. I mean, if you wanted to, this could be the same level as the top, but no, not for me. <laughs> that sound isn't for me, but I do like what's happening here, even when I sew this up. Oh, that's nice. See the design feature? Oh, that is really nice. It's so gorgeous, that. All these little details matter. Oh, I like that, yeah. So yeah, this is gonna be shorter and may bring it in at the back. But no, I'm liking that. Yeah, so I'm happy with the fact it's going to be this length. And then it's just then a case of how I'm going to get this to stay in position so it's gonna to have to have straps. It's just that simple. It's whether I want a strap to come from here like that or from here or both. Okay, let's focus on what I need to do next. So I need to cut the back down, take out some of this bulk, and then I'm gonna use some of that bulk to face the front, and then I focus on the straps. Yeah, 
and I'll do the buttons, I'll sew the buttons on. Um, actually, I may sew the buttons on first before putting the back on, either or. Okay, now that I've pinned, I decided to base stitch and try it on again to make sure that it was sitting the way I wanted it to and fitting the way that I wanted it to and that's fine. So I recommend doing that. I'm going to give myself a little bit of, um, so this is the basting stitch, I've missed machine sewn. So it's ready to be cooked on a seam allowance, on a pretty big seam allowance actually because I'm going to hand sew mine. You don't have to, it's, it's just a choice again, but I have to and so mine. Okay, brilliant. so this is what's left that I'm gonna use for facing the raw edge at the top here. So I'm going to take out my basting stitch, press that open, and then later on I will actually hand sew that into position. So after I've done that, taking out the basting stitch. It will be, I want to, it's it's quite a loose fit. Um, and I, I believe it will lose its structure quite quickly. So what I'm going to do is interface the top part of this and also interface this just to give it a little bit more structure at the top and to stabilize it just a little bit more. So the kind of thing that I would recommend is this interface, which is a stretch, it has a stretch quality to it. So that's what I'm going to use in order to stabilize the top of the top, <laughs> and also this section, which is going to be the interfacing for the inside of the top. Okay, it is now interfaced, the top part of the top, put that to one side. Now I just need to cut this section, which is going to be the facing but inside the top and I need to cut it in three sections. One, two, three. Oh, I think I made it easy for myself here. Cut there and cut here and I've got, yeah, so it's going to cut down here and down here and then I'll have three strips in which to work with. The three strips have now been cut so I'm going to place them on to the top just to give you an idea of how I'm going to be working with this. Um, got those two ends together so I'll put that there. This is the centre back. Right, so I need to fill those two gaps. So that'll be a case of cutting this piece in half and hopefully, yes, I'll have enough, yeah, for each side. Yes. So I'll cut this in half. And then I have one long strip then. One on that side, and one on the other side. Excellent, so I'm just going to sew, sew these strips into place and then put in spacing on them and then before I actually sew onto the top I need to think about the straps. The facing is now sewn and I press interfacing onto the back of that as well. Like I said earlier it's going to be a case of me fitting it again and figuring out the positions for the straps so that's what I'm going to do next. So this is all that I have of some black velvet ribbon and I know it's not going to be enough so I'm going to add to it a little bit. So um, let me see, I've got a choice of elastic, two choices of elastic, I've got this thicker one and this narrow one. And it's going to be, right, so I'm going, to, I'm going to cut this in half. Okay. I'm going to use our pink and shears because that helps with it stop fraying. Okay. 
So I'm only going to need elastic on one half, which is going to be this end. So it's, which one is the best one? I'm going to choose. That's really quite broad. And no, I'm not. I'm, hmm. No, there's a narrow one. Oh yeah. Yes, I'm going to go for the narrow, narrow elastic. I won't need much. Maybe be about that much, I think. Okay, that's what I'm going to go for. The straps are now sewn, so I can't do an AB shape. So I've sewn it at the bottom here and I've sewn the elastics to the ends. And then all, next what I'll do then is try it on to make sure it's, it, it feels right, it looks right. And then I'll be ready to sew it onto the actual top. Okay. It's okay, comfortable. So what I'm going to do now is just put this, the strap onto the button stand and pin that into place. Like that, and then it just flips over like that. Oh yeah, that's nice. Yeah, ow. Just stick myself, should I use a pin there? A safety pin, I should say. Yeah, that's nice. And it, I'll just turn around the back so you can see. You can see the elastic. Then I'll position it into the top like so. Yeah, I like that. So I just need to sew the basin onto this and then it will be done. And the elastic. Yeah, so I can get movement. Yes. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That's fine. Okay. And then that will be done. I just need to go back to the top section, the little cardigan, the mini cardigan, I'll call it. Okay, so all that is required of me then is now to sew this in position. That button is a little bit close actually. Oh, I should be able to sew that. Yeah, that should be all right. Yeah, sew that in position. So I'll, I'll sew that in first and then um, just to make sure so it's quite secure. And then I'll get my facing and then sew my facing all the way around. Almost done with the little camisole top that goes underneath the mini cardigan. Um, I've sewn the facing on and I've sewn the elastic, the straps into position. So all I need to do then, and I've also understitched to make sure it stays on the inside. So it's going to need a good press and then it will be ready to be worn and a little bit of hand sewing as well is gonna be involved in that. So now I need to go back to the little mini cardigan and I am going to put elastic at the bottom of that. So I'll show you how that works. Yes, I thought I'll join you. <laughs> um, you haven't seen my face for a while while I've been doing this. So um, yeah, now that the top is finished and all I need to do is press and hand sew, I need to focus on my mini cardigan and what I am going to do because I've used all of the cardigan which is a plus that's brilliant and what I tend to do is that whenever I do a refashion project and this fabric little bits left over I just consider them as fabric scraps then I'll add it to another project now this is what's going to happen with this um I did a project where I did this beautiful oh, it was so gorgeous, sculptural top, and I used a skirt, and this is what was left over. So I've got the yoke and waistband, 
that is left over from that project and I'm going to use that in this project. Now I'll put a, a little image up here of what it looks like. It is so gorgeous. Um, yeah, you know, give that, give that a go because it's not a lot of sewing <laughs> compared to this one. Anyway, going back to this, um, I'm going to cut this in order to create a casing to put some elastic through. So I've got my bag of tricks of elastic. So I've got some cord elastic here and I'm going to run that through the hem of the top. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to fold this back like so, get as big a section as I possibly can, put some pins in. It's slightly curved this, so I'm going to do my best to keep the curve in. Because I want as much as possible. Because it isn't long enough if I just do two straights. It possibly needs three, but I'm going to try and manage with two because the back is standing away from my body quite a lot and the front isn't. So I'm going to gather that a little bit so that I only require two strips in order to create the casing. I'm working on the back. So I've given slight gathers towards the back. So hopefully I will not need to extend this section anymore. Oh, just about. I'm going to take in a little bit more of the gathers so that fits comfortably. Yeah. So I'm just going to pin that just roughly so you get an idea. Yeah. Gather the back just a bit more, I will. So what I'm going to do is going to sew along here, along the edge, all the way to the other end in order to create my casing. Cut some of this bulk away. Too much there. And here as well. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is pin it along here take it to my sewing machine and then sew it all the way down. I'm at the final stages of this project now, so it's just a case of sewing this casing into place. Now, I am actually going to hand sew this. I'll tell you the reason why. It's because there's no top stitching on the cardigan itself or on the camisole. And what that is, is just that you'd have a line of stitching running all the way around and I don't want that and um, so I'm going to hand sew this into place. So what I have done is, I'll just backtrack a little bit, so I gathered the back a little bit because we know it's a bit too full so that I can get this tape into place, this casing into place and then uh, so that it's just a straight stitch on the sewing machine, straight stitch down, flipped it over pressed and then understitched to make sure it stays on, on the inside and then press the edge here so that the casing can go on the inside. But like I said, I'm going to hand sew mine into position. So I'm using elastic. You can use cord, it's just because I haven't got any cord and I've got quite a bit of this elastic so why not use it? and it will be a case of, I will provide you with a video tutorial on how to do elastic casing. Um, that method is a bit different from the method I'm going to show you now, or at least talk to you about, is that I'm actually going to put the cord in place and then I'm going to turn this and hand sew. It's basically the same, it's, it's, it's just the video tutorial that I'm linking you to is to do it on the sewing machine and this is really how to do it 
by hand but also on a sewing machine because you could actually take this to a sewing machine and sew it into place but what you have is a case the um, cord the elastic will be encased in it as you are finishing off the actual method that's the best way I can describe it um, but you don't have to do that you can turn it down so and then get a pin and, and then just feed it through it's just your choice so that's it so once I've got that done then I'll show you what it looks like putting them both together yes it's a project that I'm um, yeah I'm happy with it's a lot of hand sewing involved but it definitely is worth it because it is a cute top and a cute a cute set It looks so much better like this, doesn't it? Wouldn't you agree? It's cute. Yeah. So I've got the cord in now, or elastic. And this is the effect that I wanted to get the back out, pulls it in at the back. Yeah, that's what I wanted to achieve. And there's no top stitching involved. This is all hand sewn. That I like. I just like that. And yeah, really happy with the results. The only issue I have is I'm going to need press studs. I need to get invisible ones or clear ones. As I, I put some here because it doesn't lie flat, but they're black and I thought that may work, but no, I'm not happy with that. And I'm gonna have to put one here, here, and at the bottom as well. And um, that's just to keep it all in place and keep the button stands kind of not gaping. It's not gaping because it's it's too tight because it, it it's not. It's just because of the fabric and there's no support whatsoever in the button and the button stand. There's no support. It needs to be there. That's probably, that's one way around it. Let me just take off my little mini cardigan and show you. There we go. They're over my shoulder. <laughs> Show you back. Nice and finished off. I'm happy with the result. I really am. Yeah, it's a good project. I've had, I've had fun making this one. Well, I've had fun with, all, with, with them all, I should say. <laughs> But it's cute, it turned out, yeah, it looks so much better like this. I like the way the pockets are as well, here, in, in the actual cami section of it as well. But no, it's, it's lovely. It really... Well, that was certainly worth all the effort. So, so happy with that project. It's so gorgeous and I need to stop saying that. <laughs> it's my favorite so far of all my projects and I also need to stop saying that as well because I said that about all my projects. Um, yeah, it worked out. Um, <laughs> what tips and advice I could share with you? Okay, first of all, do consider the knitwear you're working with because it can be if you're new to it, stick with a lighter weight knit. That way you won't have to deal with any of the bulk. But if you do have to deal with some of the bulk, especially around the facing of the um, cami underneath, um, use just plain fabric, that's fine. You don't have to use um, the cardigan if you've got anything left over like what I did. Um, I do that myself personally, even though if I really wanted that flat look to it a bit more i would use fabric i really would but i'm challenging myself to refashion and use every part of a garment as much as i possibly can it works and i will still go ahead and do something like that um personally and still wear it obviously i'm going to keep on wearing this one well i will do when i get a chance to go out somewhere and wear it and um, but yeah just use fabric that's fine uh what else is there? Choice of buttons, is, it really is going to be up to you. Um, the elastic, um, I've got a bag of, well not a bag, I've got 
drawers and boxes of trimmings and I want to use them as much as possible like with the ribbon um, I've used it on several projects and that's all that's left at the moment so I'm glad that's all gone and it's gone to a worthwhile, a worthwhile cord which is this amazing top and it's always a good idea when you are refashioning that you've got a little bit of uh, trimmings around because they will aid you to make sure that you can use fastenings and get in and out of garments so the links will be to like buttons uh, how to on a button how to cover a button because the bigger buttons are actually um cover buttons but also a shank and that the smaller buttons are also a shank as well um but i'll put links to all those videos that i've used techniques that i've used in this um top set um with it within under the description so please do click on those and they'll help you with this project um there's nothing else really to say it's the key to really fascinating is to fit it's to have handy a seam ripper and fit that is where you are going to succeed don't challenge yourself to kind of if something isn't lying right don't blame yourself too much because sometimes it can be the construction of the garment um, and you may not especially if you are a beginner aware of that um, just go with it you know if you can if it's not sitting right then try and make some kind of adjustment that gets a a particular um, technique to life like that's a key to any kind of sewing whether you're starting from scratch or you're refashioning and yeah so if you have any comments or tips if you have any comments that you want to um i'll start again so if you have any comments that you want to make about this video tutorial and um, please put them in the comment box below please do share this video as well with your friends and on your social media platforms and please do give it a thumbs up as well and i will see you next time